The question of how life on Earth originated has been studied by scientists and scholars alike for millennia. In the last few centuries, advancements in biology, chemistry, and our understanding of the universe as a whole have allowed us to learn more about the origin of our planet and the life that defines it than ever before in human history. Still, there is much we have to learn about the formation of life from non-living matter, much of which is based upon our understanding of fundamental organic molecules. My name is Gavin Ockert, and this is my presentation on my team's work on the origins of life studying carbonaceous meteorites, which was conducted under Dr. Jim Cleaves for the YSP Blue Marble Program. Our work is centered around carbonaceous chondrites, which are meteorites found on Earth that are thought to be some of the oldest remnants of our solar system's creation, generally aged at around 4.5 billion years old. They're defined by their namesake, carbon, a fundamental element in any organic molecule. They also usually contain water, making them promising subjects in the study of life's origin on Earth. We analyzed chemical data from 24 samples, which were taken from eight carbonaceous meteorites, five Martian meteorites, and two synthetic analogs, in order to find patterns among carbonaceous chondrites. In particular, we looked at the mass to charge ratios, theoretical masses, and abundance of various elements for each sample. Much of the elemental data that we used in our project had been obtained through mass spectrometry. In essence, molecules from the samples had been ionized to produce a charge. They were then separated, based on their mass-to-charge ratio, in a process known as mass analysis, in order to learn more about the differences in ratios of different elements in the sample. This process allowed for the following novel visual analysis of these meteorite samples. Mass spectrum plots, like the one shown here, plot the relative abundance of detected ions against their mass-to-charge ratio, allowing for isotopes with a high presence in the sample to be identified. This can be seen in the peaks shown on this graph. We also made Van Krevlin plots, which help us visualize the distribution of organic elements in our samples by comparing the sample's ratio of hydrogen to carbon with its ratio of oxygen to carbon. The resulting clusters and data points can be used to identify organic compounds, this can even be extended to the third dimension, as shown on the image on the right, when the ratio of nitrogen to carbon is also included. The DBE, or double bond equivalent, versus the number of carbon plots allowed us to compare the degree of unsaturation in molecules found in the samples with their corresponding number of carbon atoms. The more unsaturated a molecule, the greater its DBE value, and the longer it is, the more carbon atoms are likely present in the molecule. This allows for patterns to emerge that can be used to determine whether or not the samples have a high concentration of different types of organic molecules based on molecule length and saturation. This only covers a few of the plots that the team made using the mass spectrometry data. Venn diagrams, element counts versus mass to charge ratios, mass difference network plots, and many more uh, visual representations of the data were compiled for later analysis. My main work on this project was the development of Kendrick mass defect plots for all 24 samples. By normalizing the mass of various molecules in the samples to the mass of CH2, or methylene, and finding the rounding difference, we can use a graph to easily identify molecules whose masses differ only by the addition or subtraction of methylene groups. These molecules are represented by points forming a horizontal line in the graph. Molecules with the same difference between the rounded normalized mass and the exact normalized mass likely have the same number of methylene groups, even if their actual masses range. Our work has opened the door for novel analysis of the chemical properties of meteorites on a new level. With the power of mass spectrometry, we have taken chemical data from prehistoric extraterrestrial artifacts and run with it, creating plots representing everything from differences in isotope concentrations between samples to the number of carbon atoms and methylene groups in each molecule. We know that life requires the many carbon-based organic molecules found on Earth to exist, so compiling this chemical data from carbonaceous chondrites will help us learn to what extent early meteorites contributed to an early Earth's acquiring of various key compounds. In the era of AI, it's well within reach for machine learning models to use our work to find patterns between samples, helping to differentiate between meteorites from Mars or deeper in the solar system, bringing us ever closer to an answer to a question that long predates modern science. Where did we come from?